Praise the Lord, saints of God. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you and myself. Okay, so my name is Tish Michelle. I want to tell you guys how yesterday it became. It went from my worst day into uh, my very best day. Okay, and I want to tell you why. Yesterday was a trying day. Okay, so so much happened when i tell you late in the midnight hour god turns things around in the nick of time right when you think he's not gonna show up and show out he does and he did so it starts off with many disappointments many frustrations so it starts off with my client that lives with me he had an interview with someone who instead of doing they walk outside this is how it starts off going south my day went south it was awful before it god turned it around unexpectedly Hallelujah. See, I just thank God for obeying the Lord and going on that fast. So long story short, my client was interviewing outside on the porch. He didn't tell me. He never tells me, even though I ask him a million times, just give me a heads up when you have company coming over. Um, but anyways, he doesn't do that. He'll tell someone else that he's going to have company right in front of me, but won't tell me. <laughs> but anyway, he's outside interviewing and... I hear this, what sounded to be an African dialect. This guy was speaking with an African uh, accent, okay? Um, he was asking questions, personal questions, questions that had nothing to do with interviewing for the position. He was asking things about my children and different things about the household, different things that he did, should not. If you're interviewing for a position, why are you trying to ask about me, especially since your job is a companion to take the client out into the community? I had to wind up going outside and asking this young man, why is he asking questions about me and my children? But uh, anyways, so that happened. My client wound up taking up for me. But anyways, and the guy did not get the job. And he, it just, he was so evil um, because when I, when I was questioning him as to when I went outside, like, and he kept asking the same things over and over and over. But anyway, um, I asked him, you know, what does that have to do with the interview? Uh, long story short, because companions only make like seven and eight dollars an hour. He was asking questions about the rent and was this my client's house because he has no clients. Uh, if he would have gotten this job, it would have been his one and only and first client. And being that companion services doesn't make any money. He was obviously trying to find a house. That's why he kept asking my client over and over, which if you're asking a mental person something over and over who has an IQ of 60, nine times out of 10, you're trying to coerce them to say what you want them to say. So obviously the guy, because I heard him before they even started the interview, he said, do you need any other services? So that's why he kept asking, do you rent here? Do you want a room? Is this your house? And then I heard the client keep answering over and over and over and over again. He kept asking him the same thing over and over again. Because he wanted both my position and his position is what that's the only reason why he would have been doing that. Okay, but long story short, he did not get hired. See if you, you know, God will fight your battles. He didn't get hired because there is no way that companion services can take the clients out into the community, which that is their job. Um, if he's sitting up in my house doing his hours. Uh, then that's bringing a risk to my house because we don't know who he's come in contact with, which is why in a lot of these group homes right now, they're not even allowing companion services or social workers to even enter the building. Also, they're not even allowing the parents of these clients to visit their children in group homes right now. So, you know, I wasn't going for that. Okay, so then... Um, <laughs> this happens more often than none. Um, so I go to a corner store with my children and the cashier and owner of the store takes a girl that was behind me, ahead of me. I didn't like that. You know, I had to say something. What else happened? So many different things. Oh, yeah. Um, someone emails me and tells me that there's fraudulent activity going on on my cash app so then when I call the number no one answers I get a call back 
because I wouldn't give out my information. This guy tells me on the phone that uh, he's going to send the cops after me. So everything just, it was a date. But late in the midnight hour, God turned this thing around. So um, I was falling off to sleep. It was after 12 o'clock midnight. The Holy Spirit woke me up and I began to, God began to just tell me what to do and just put it in my spirit. And he began to speak to me. He said, you are my mouthpiece and the enemy is trying to shut you up. That is why you have that locked jaw muscle uh, in your mouth. Speak to it and you need to tell it to go. So I began to stretch my mouth just completely wide and just keep on stretching it just a few times and I began to pray and I said you know I was just like praying within my spirit and I was just like um this is gonna go you're gonna go yeah this is it I've had it it is time for you to go in the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus and I began to pray and God began to unlock that bald muscle that was in my mouth. It began to straighten up. Now, I had to work with it a little bit. I had to literally work with it a little bit. But let me tell you, it was a wonderful experience because it was easing up, you know, just the more and more that I began to stretch out my mouth that knot began to unfold and come out and um you know it just amazes me that after i was attacked all yesterday you know lo and behold at midnight a change took place so i just want to encourage you guys to let you know that god he just steps in he steps in at the nick of time uh at the nick of time you don't expect it you know and it was just such a blessing and i just want to thank you guys for being here with me i know it's been a rough week and i was on four different medications in excruciating pain um but you know but god that's all i can say but god I believe that Father wanted me to go through this healing process to remind me about the fact that these kind come through by fasting and prayer and with this Sharona going around just to let us know that his healing virtue, he took stripes for us that we would be healed, you know, and that blessings come at midnight let this encourage you to know that there may be a spirit of pestilence and plague all around you but stand on god's word and his promises by his stripes we are healed and though it tarry whatever you waiting for god for whatever you're praying for though it tarry wait for it okay so good things are birthed through trials and tribulations you know and god is able to show up show out and turn things all around so um i didn't expect that it was unexpected and when god gathers his people when he gathers his elect from the four cor corners of the earth um you know it's gonna come through travail unfortunately things i don't they not getting better from what i can see but hold on and hold out because our exodus is coming okay our redemption draweth nigh okay so i love you guys be blessed